Good day everybody, Kevin Hogan, author of The Psychology of Persuasion. The Psychology of Persuasion is 18 years old today. Just unconsciously amazing. I can't even hardly believe it. My little child has become an adult. Author of 21 other books, translated into 41 languages all around the world. Today, hypnotic storytelling for the purpose of narrative transportation, taking someone from here where they are today and bringing them somewhere else to a completely different place without resistance or reactance in the middle, right? How do you capture and hold that attention in the story that you're going to tell? How is it that you can actually make this a resistance-free message? Well, you can get your message in because you're sort of using the Trojan horse, right? Your message goes inside of the story, right? And so as the message is inside of the story, then you have... You want to have a powerful story that it's going to go into. And a powerful story doesn't mean that people get beat up or that there's killing or anything like that. It just means that your story is so strong that it holds attention because of the other criteria that I've given you up until this point. There's a few other things that I want you to think about. Okay, First of all, I want you to make sure that your story has what you would consider a seemingly unsurmountable situation. In other words, in one of the last couple of videos, I can't recall which one it was, I shared with you a story about how I was invited to come to Poland to work on the HIV AIDS um, prevention program, and we were holding the meeting at a convent. That's a Catholic facility. It's a Catholic country, but we're trying to get people to wear condoms to prevent HIV AIDS from spreading, right? So th it's an unsurmountable situation, right? I'm going to sit here in a convent's chapel talking to people from the government who have all driven down from Warsaw to meet with me down there, and we're going to talk in this environment in the most seemingly hostile environment you could possibly have, something that's 100% antithetical to your message. That's an unsurmountable situation, or so it would seem. And then, you, of course, you can tell your story after that. But that's how it's got to seem. When you're telling your story, what is it that's seemingly insurmountable about the story that you're going to tell? Second thing you do is you want to match your character to the audience. Okay, so as, you, as I'm looking at the audience and I'm trying to think of what story I want to tell, I pick out a couple people in the audience and I think, ah, this is who they are, this is what they're like. They're going to respond best to this kind of a story because these people are very similar to the people in these stories that I'm talking about, okay? Or they're similar to me in how they would respond to my experiences that I tell. So I'll match my character to their character in the audience. Third, realize that there's all kinds of problems that we all have that are consistently constant between us. One of the things that we know is going to resonate with everybody in the audience is that people are sick in their family and that they have money problems. They're trying to think of new ways to generate money and that, that, uh, that they're concerned about somebody in their family, that they're broke or that they're breaking up with their spouse or they're afraid of breaking up or they're afraid of losing something. These are consistent themes. So whatever these consistent themes are, make sure that you touch on one of them early on in your story because as soon as you have a consistent theme, a theme between you and I that connects people together, you will hold on to the story until you see how it has been dealt with, assuming that it's a seemingly insurmountable situation and that your character is like mine because you'll want to see how this like-minded character dealt with it. So that brings us to what is the real struggle? You don't say, oh yeah, Kev was having a tough day down in Poland when he had to do the convent thing. That doesn't do you any good. You have to sit there and say, what is this? You got to think to yourself, what is the struggle? The struggle is, I saw the 11 year old girls, you want to call them prostitute, but that would be the wrong word because they really weren't. They were just forced to be there by people who are really, really bad, and you tell that story in great detail, four or five minutes of that, and then you show how another one, and then you have your the experience of how you identify and what it means to you, and you tell that. So it's detail, all right? It's how is the protagonist reacting to this experience? The protagonist in this case is me. How am I reacting and how am I feeling inside? And what is it doing to my gut? Because if I've identified with you, if I've got you, if I've held your attention, if I've captivated you, you will now not leave this channel until you've heard the rest of the story. And then you want to know what happens next. What is it that Kevin experiences next? What is he going to do about what he just saw? Well, it wasn't indeed a huge irony that this was on the trip down to the southwest port border of Poland. And 
I was there to talk about HIV AIDS prevention, and here I am seeing one of the worst offenses, not only about HIV AIDS, but about just about how children are dealt with as a whole. It was terrible. And so, so my gut, I just felt terrible at every part of my inside, but I don't say that. I explain what I was feeling, right? All right. And then when I tell you what I did and how I helped develop this program, I just had my little part in it, my little role, right? All right. So I tell you that, and would you have done the same thing in my situation, even if you were in a Catholic chapel, in a convent? Would you have gone in there? And you know the answer is yes, because it would have been the right thing to do, right? It would have been the right thing to do. Next time around, I'll give you an example of a really cool story just like that. Okay, guys, I will see you on the next video.